Welcome to Space Vidcast 4.10 for Friday, April 15th, 2011. We are your hosts, Benjamin and Carrie and Higginbotham, and uh, Yuri's Night was like two nights ago. What did you? What? Oh. W would love was... any space shuttle. That will Got make it. sense in a moment. Uh, <laughs> Yuri's Night was just a couple nights ago, the f uh, 50th anniversary of humans going into space, mm -hmm. and we were the global webcast providers for that, jumping around the world. I don't know what that is for. Uh, jumping around the world, going from different locations, showing the different parties, bringing yes. in different people, talking about their experiences and why uh, humanity is so much fun. And you can get more information on yuriesnight.net. Why humanity is so much fun. That's what I said. It's not what I meant to say, but those were the words Whoa, that came out. What 50 years of human spaceflight meant to you and what the next 50 years will look like. Those words. Those were the Use things those. that we talked about. Use those words. And why humanity is so much fun. Humanity is fun. So um, much fun. On Yuri's night, uh, Yuri, <laughs> during Yuri's day, is that how that would work? Sure. We, the NASA announced where the different space shuttles were going to go. Yes. Uh, space shuttle Discovery is going to the Smithsonian, where right. Enterprise is currently. Mm -hmm. Enterprise is going to New York, so mm -hmm. they're going to take Enterprise out and uh, move move that Little orbit over to New York. Uh, space shuttle Endeavour is going to LA, mm -hmm. and space shuttle Atlantis, my girl. Mm -hmm. is going to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. He's which so is, happy about I that. I am because so there, are two, there are two places we go as space nerds all the time. We go yeah. to K KSC and then we go to uh, basically the space, um, not the Space Coast, we go to the, uh, what is that, the West Coast. Yes. Um, quite often, but it's like in for- In the LA area. In the LA area, but you know, we'll go like, we'll go to KSC and then LA, then KSC, then Ohio, then KSC. So for every other trip we do, there's one other KSC trip. So we're constantly at Kennedy Space Center, mm -hmm. which means I will probably get to see Atlantis up close and personal. That's of everywhere that they could put that that particular orbiter. So that makes happy. me. Now I would have been happy them putting it anywhere. I would have gone yeah. to see Atlantis no matter where it was. Yeah, yeah. But you know that's. Uh, Jed for me said he got to stand right next to her. Thanks for rubbing that in. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, pretty but Ohio's much. not exactly pleased with that particular decision. No, uh, you know, and I. Ohio. Oh, well, I can kind of understand. I mean, even on Ohio's quarter, you know how they did the state quarters? Even on Ohio's quarter, there's a little spaceman. Um, spaceman! For Ohio, because, right. you know, that's sort of where flight in general kind of took off. Please forgive the pun. I really oh, didn't. Oh, boo. I didn't mean to So Ohio is calling for a federal investigation of how we came to the determination yes. of where all the orbiters are going to go. Yes. And what are they asking? They want... They, so it's kind of hard to sort of work around, but Ohio is upset that they didn't get a shuttle or an orbiter. I'm sorry. Um, so they are citing the NASA Authorization Act that laid out criteria for site selection, including geographic diversity, locations that could provide uh, display and maintenance of the orbiters, blah, 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 uh, best potential view to the public, and locations that would have that would advance educational opportunities in science-based technology, engineering, and mathematics. And finally, eligible sites would have a historical relationship with either the launch, flight operations, or processing of the space shuttle orbiters, or the retrieval of NASA manned space vehicles, or significant contributions to human spaceflight. So, so and they gripe. feel they meet all of those requirements. But their real gripe is New York, right? Because... Because L.A. meets those requirements. That's basically where the shuttle was built. Right. I, I mean, they... And sometimes she lands there. Right. So, I mean, that they, they have a claim to it there. Right. Um, Kennedy Space Center. Mm, that makes sense as well. Right. Uh, the, the Smithsonian, where Enterprise currently is. Again, that's a no-brainer. That right. makes a lot of sense. Right. So, the, really, their gripe has got to be New York. Right, because they're basically saying that New York has no real connection to the shuttle program. Um, and then having three orbiters on the East Coast and only one on the West Coast and none in the middle. Hello. You know, what about us, that's though? That's a legitimate Hang concern. On. Uh, let me throw this out there. What about Minneapolis? Uh, we've got the Mall of America, who gets more visitors than uh, Disney, Disney World. World. Yeah. And it's like more visitors in Disney World and Disneyland per year combined or something like that. Right. Um, 
we, we've got uh, ATK, who makes the solid rocket boosters. Their global headquarters is right here in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Right. Uh, and then we've also got uh, uh, MTS Systems, who also does some work on the space shuttle. So we do have some right. aerospace here right. in Minnesota. Right. And we've got uh, the land right next to the Mall of America available to build a facility just for the shuttle. It's, it's so large that Cirque du Soleil is putting a pop-up tent and having a show there for the next couple of months. So, you know, I mean, we that's could, how big it people is. could make this exact same argument. I just made an argument in 30 seconds for Minneapolis. And there are only essentially four orbiters to go around. Right. So, uh, you know, New York getting an orbit, I guess, uh, is a little bit wacky. Um, so, speaking of uh, so New York. Yeah, they're getting, so Ohio's a little bit upset about the New York. New York getting an orbiter. New York is uh, getting an orbiter, and uh, New York is upset that they're getting the fake orbiter. At least someone in New York. <laughs> So uh, go ahead and switch over to my computer if you don't mind, Kath, because here's the thing. We're not going to, I don't really want to highlight. Uh, um, and switch out the graphics as well, because uh, you, you'll. Th this is the New York story. I don't think they were really made that apparent in the timeline. Um, and the title of this story is "New York Deserves Better Than Fake Enterprise Shuttle Prototype," <laughs> while LA and Virginia get the real thing. It just I'm just gonna <laughs> let that. I'm gonna let that one sink in for a moment, guys. Fake. Enterprise shuttle. Now, you'll notice that we're not promoting the URL, and, and hopefully your screen's blurry enough where you can't really see it. We're not promoting the <laughs> URL because I believe Joanna, Joanna Molly, Maoli, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Malloy. Malloy, there you go. Joanna Malloy, I'm thinking might be baiting people to go to this. I think she's using like just. Really? Like the very first line of her entire article is So New York gets a fake space shuttle. Unbelievable, she says. I think she's baiting people. I think she is. But the thing is, though, as you continue to read it, she, the way she refers to each orbiter is redonkulous. She's mm -hmm. like, well, the Enterprise is going blah, 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 blah. And the Atlantis is going blah, blah, blah. And, and the Discovery. The Discovery. She's... And for some reason, she's convinced that Endeavor is going to Disneyland. <laughs> which I'm not really Although, sure. You know what? I would love to see this. It would this. be so cool. They that's should not put, where it's going. Oh, that's where they should put the orbiters. They, they should put it in. They should just leave it where it landed in the basin, okay? <laughs> um, the core. The core, thank Anyhow, you. Anyhow, uh, thankfully, we as Space Tweeps, part of the Space Tweeps Society, can fully support the number of Space Tweeps that have pointed out what is her name? Joanna Malloy. Joanna Malloy's inconsistencies in her reporting. <laughs> if you go through... Reporting. Well, if you go through the 67 comments, uh, you will see a, a few familiar names, such as Joy the Artist, such as Flying Jenny, such as Aaliyah, um, people who continue to be uh, wonderful space tweeps and, and big supporters of space in general. Uh, there is somebody who says that they are confused because, you know, they they take the shuttle every day to and from work, which I, I did actually kind of funny. That's funny. funny. Anyhow, uh, uh, but it is kind of worth sort of going through. And I would like to point out, for those of you who are not from the New York or, or that area, the NewYorkDailyNews.com or New York Daily News uh, at first can kind of sound as though, particularly with this article, uh, as if it's an inquirer sort of type news it's a real magazine. this is a real news this is a real newspaper yeah. that has gotten uh, Pulitzer prizes I you're mean, kidding no. these guys and they let this reporter write for them Lord only knows how this stuck by hmm. so I just I just wanted to just well here's the thing New York out. New York if you don't want your orbiter Minneapolis, we'll take it. All Minneapolis right. would love to take it. Here's the thing with Enterprise. So for those who don't know, there are actually four orbiters right now. Right. Um, there is Discovery, which just retired. Endeavor, which is about to launch for the very last time. Atlantis, which is right after Endeavor, and we, it, then that would be the last mission of the space shuttle program ever. Uh, and then there's Enterprise. And Enterprise has never actually flown into space, but it was designed to. Enterprise was the, dr the test article for the space shuttle program. And it was drop tested from the, uh, from the shuttle carrier aircraft. And um, 
it was used to make sure that it could act as a glider, right, it, as a yeah, giant brick. If it wasn't for Enterprise, we wouldn't be where we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have a prototype, and she, at some point, was going to be retrofitted to fly into space. Correct, but they found that the cost of retrofitting Enterprise was more than just building another orbiter, right. so they built another orbiter. Uh, once again, when we, uh, after the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, they looked at Enterprise because Enterprise was designed to be a flight-worthy bird, right. and so they looked to Enterprise and said, should we use Enterprise and turn her into an actual f uh, flight article? And um, I, once again, they opted not to. The cost of building a new one uh, using some of the parts from d uh, different orbiters made more sense, so they used other parts uh, to build Space Shuttle Endeavor, and that's where Endeavor came from. So don't look at Space Shuttle Enterprise as the fake Space Shuttle. Space Shuttle Enterprise is where it all started. Yeah. Everything that we have today is based off of the information that we got off of Enterprise. And by the way, Enterprise has been sitting proudly in the Smithsonian um, Museum mm -hmm. on display for people for many years. Mm -hmm. So the fact that New York is getting anything at all is a big deal. They there are really four of these in the country. And to be perfectly frank, there are a lot more deserving people to get it. For yep. example, Houston. You know what Houston got? Nothing. The Johnson Space Center got absolutely nothing, and I think it's a little funny. Uh, you know, there was an article, actually, um, why Houston did not get a space shuttle. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a blog uh, by someone you may have heard of you before. You know what? I'll, I'll let me bring it up on screen. Uh, His name is Wayne Hale. And... Wayne, since his retirement, has been busy on his blog, and this mm -hmm. is one of the things that he has spoken out about, uh, why Houston did not get a shuttle. And as somebody else pointed out in the chat room, Wayne Hale is awesome. Uh, he, it's, I don't think I have a banner for it, so it's waynehale.wordpress.com. Yeah. And in the, that's in our wiki article, so I'll make sure yeah. that that's in our show notes as well. Um, he says, anything worthwhile is worth fighting for. Mm. And he feels as though... Uh, you know, Houston was is sort of blasé about the shuttles in general. And Houston and Texas have kind of come to regard NASA and JSC as entitlements. And how unfortunate that that really, really is. Uh, you know, that that people might have written letters like they were supposed to and they might have put in requirements like they were supposed to and they all of that thing, all of those things. All of that thing. But, you know, that they did it half-heartedly. Mm -hmm. And, and... You know, I mean, I guess that's the only reason or the only way I can see and understand some sort of anger on New York's part. If they really felt like they really, really fought for it, and if they really, really did, and then they get a fake shuttle. But I, I think it's insulting to the history of the space program. It is. A space shuttle. By it the way, uh, Quantum G pointed out in the chat room that Wayne Hale is going to be on the space show uh, Sunday, April 17th, 2011. Awesome. So that's coming up this Sunday. Um, if you're watching the archive, maybe you got to it in time. But uh, it's space show archive stuff as well. So you can you yeah. can hear him talk about some of this stuff. I assume that he'll, he'll cover this uh, in sure his own words. I'm sure someone will ask him about this. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it just, he makes a lot of really good points uh, talking about how um, you can tell that Texas regards involvement with NASA as an entitlement by the evidence. When's the last time a sitting governor came to JSC? He says, I know the answer. Ann Richards in 1995. And when was the last time the Houston mayor bothered to visit JSC? Anyone remember? And he doesn't have an answer for that. And that's, that's disheartening mm -hmm. if, if that makes any sense and and I, I feel bad for Houston it, it I can see the sort of pain and, and disappointment in that um, and, and we happen to know some people who who work there and they're upset and I feel for them um, but as somebody else pointed out in the chat room nobody goes to Houston well you go to Houston if you want to see JSC otherwise what else is there I guess I guess. So it, it just very, very interesting in, in general. And um, a very good blog post uh, points out a lot of things I hadn't thought about before. But let's remember, everyone, there are four of these to go around. And everyone wants one because it's an iconic piece of American history. Right. So everyone wants a space shuttle. And there are four. And, I, you know, L.A. really, truly really does deserve one. Let's get one on that coast. And there's Absolutely. a lot of space stuff going on on, on the West Coast. Absolutely. Just a ton of space stuff Actually, that's always Actually, where happened. it's going, uh, Buzz Aldrin said that he donated his moon rock to... So that, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Uh, the Kennedy Space Center uh, Visitor Center mm -hmm. makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Uh, the Smithsonian 
uh, the uh, it's going in the annex, right, right where the old Discovery vehicle was. Right. Again, I'm sorry, old Enterprise it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Now New York, a little bit questionable. Um, and if the New Yorkers don't want it, then I would, you know, if, we'll if, if that really is truly the attitude of most of New York, which I doubt it is. I doubt it is as well. But if it is, then you know what? Uh, they don't deserve it, and let's give it to someone else. Right. But other than that, um, New York makes a lot of sense because there's so many people there, and it's such a great opportunity to get so many people engaged and excited. How often do you get to walk up and get super close to a spaceship? Especially ones that has wings, right? I mean, we get super. <laughs> well, this is yeah, no, most spaceships don't have wings, right? That's very so, true. Uh, you know, it's very true. That's that's the story with all those. And um, I, I would Ohio. I feel for you, but let's not draw this out and turn this into an issue. It's not, and you know, let's let's be let's let it be what it is. On that note, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, some other stuff going on inside of the space industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I just did a. What was that all about? For the entire crew, com check. MS1, MS2. With hands held high, an era's last reach for the sky, we must rekindle the connection to all our space program has given. To the heart of America. And America's hearts to the engines of our economy and keeping our nation secure or the sparkle in our children's eye to all who made this possible and to those that will continue the journey. Think outside the circle. Then we read you all loud and clear. Mars spins at a different rate than Earth, a 24-hour, 39-minute. When you work on Mars, you have to work on Mars time. Every day, your clock shifts by 40 minutes, and this compounds over time to give you the most horrible jet lag you could ever imagine. Had the mission gone longer than 90 days, it probably would have ended like The Shining. Watch First Orbit for free yes. at firstorbit.org, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. I almost said .com, uh, .org. And as they were mentioning in the chat room, if you're watching live, uh, there's it's about an hour and 52 minutes or so until the Atlas, I believe it's an Atlas V uh, launch. And we're going to try to cover that live here on Space Vidcast. And a really awesome announcement, uh, for those of you who have iPads, the Mission Clock application has been updated and now fully supports the full resolution of the iPad screen without having to do that stupid little 2x thing. So it looks just it gorgeous. Looks gorgeous. It looks much nicer, right? So that's a free update. So if you already own Mission Clock, and if you don't, you should. If you already own Mission Clock, uh, go go grab 
the update in it, you know, on your iPad and it just looks gorgeous and so you can see the countdown going on right there. And if you didn't know, anytime we do launch coverage, so you're watching STS-133 and you had that, actually the banner on the bottom screen looks much like this, but you've got uh, mission information over here like um, uh, a T minus clock, L minus clock, and then um, ascent information over here. That's all powered by mission clock. So thank you very much, Jet, for me, who's in the chat room. And uh, you know, we really should, uh, we should, you know, uh, Space Vidcast, in, before, you know how we did the Roku giveaways? Yes. We should start doing some mission clock giveaways as well. Ooh. We should buy like a batch of 10 of those things and just like, just give them away on the show. So we'll work on uh, doing that. Uh, we'll start working on that for next week's show. Yes, carry on. Uh, Mealing has decided to make a small announcement. Oh. Saying he is no longer with Mass and Space Systems as CFO. He's actually off setting up a company called Astrogistics. Is that my pronouncing that correctly? Um, and to do payload manufacturing and mission operations. Did we just break news story on Space Vidcast? Because we don't break news normally. So, Meeling, is that true? Or are you, are you trying to punk us for doing our April Fool's joke? Which was funny. <laughs> uh, come on, that was funny. It was, it was good. We got some of you out there. Well, congratulations, Meeling. That sounds awesome. And uh, uh, best luck. You know, we should talk. Let's talk after the show and um, see what you're doing. See if it uh, sounds, sounds interesting and fun. All right. Um, Nice. Some launch slips, unfortunately. You know, we we always want to talk about how the space new space vehicles are right around the corner and they're going to launch this year and they're getting ready to go. Uh, but the cold, harsh reality of it is, this stuff is hard. It's rocket scientists. Yes. It's rocket scientists. It's rocket scientists. It takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of knowledge, and a lot of patience. Yes. And. Um, uh, the I just lost my place. The Angara. <laughs> uh, uh, launch vehicle has slipped two two, two years, years two in just years. three months. Yep, that's craziness. In part due to the uh, I, I want to say the Baikonur, but uh, they they launch on a Baikonur now. What's the name of the new launch complex they're building? Uh, they've got a new launch complex they're building. They're having issues with the new launch com complex, and so this vehicle has been pushed back two more years. The the um, Angara launch vehicles are a new generation of Baikonur. Oh, sure. I don't, no, I thought it would start with a K. Oh, am I just off? I, no, I could be wrong. Um, okay. But the next generation launch vehicles are supposed to be super eco-friendly. They're designed to use um, non-toxic fuels, uh, much like, uh, I, I don't know if it's the same tech as the space shuttle, but when the space shuttle main engines, the, the only exhaust they have is water. It's liquid hydrogen and oxygen, you know, H2O, you get water vapor that comes off. Uh, off the back of it. So a little bit sad news for Russia and their next generation vehicle. Yeah. Um, and, and it is what it is, so we're not going to see a new vehicle there. Although, um, you know, they're still pushing forward, so it's, it's They're busy taxiing us over, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When the space shuttle retires, they're trying to sell us more seats on the Soyuz. That's what's happening. Kourou <laughs> in French Guiana. Kourou. I thought that was a working... Vi uh, working uh, Ryan Space isn't Kourou an uh, an online uh, spaceport though. Anyhow, we'll, we'll figure we'll it figure out. We'll figure it out. It's you know what? It's in our wiki. It, it, so bam, there's more information right there, and all the words that I can't pronounce are in that link. Yes. Uh, as as is the launch complex that I cannot remember that is getting delayed. Uh, <laughs> speaking of cancellations, if you remember on STS-133, which was the final flight of Space Shuttle Discovery, they were going to do something awesome. Uh, for the first time, I think ever, they had a vehicle from basically every nation. Um, that w that's not entirely true, but they had one of the, just about every vehicle uh, docked to the International Space Station. And they were going to pop a Soyuz capsule off and do a fly around of the ISS to take pictures of all of that. Um, it serves a couple of purposes. One, beautiful, historic, awesome footage it would have been because there are two Soyuz uh, vehicles at the time. Uh, right. So that popping one off, you still would have had the other one. Right. Uh, but the second reason is now that the space shuttle is retiring, uh, they use the space shuttle normally as the fly-around vehicle, just mm -hmm. kind of look at the ISS from time to time. They're going to need a new vehicle to do that, and this was going to be kind of a test for all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, then they decided, okay, well, they couldn't do it in STS-133, no. so then they pushed it back to STS-134. Mm -hmm. We just got word it's not going to happen on STS-134 either, which gives them one more chance to do this, and that's STS-135, the final, right. the final flight of the space shuttle, comma, ever, comma, ever. Yeah, that one that is totally going, because 135? We, we totally have gotten word on that, and it's been... Yeah, one, funded. One thirty, one thirty-five. Actually, it may have been funded earlier today. Uh, so NASA's budget should have been set earlier today. We we don't have enough information on it That's to speak true. about it on That's the show, true. which is why we haven't brought it up yet. Um, but we'll we'll look into it. and We'll probably do. Um, I'm going to try to start up the space pods sometime. 
I'm not going to commit myself to anything. But if, if once we get more information, next on three that, we'll months talk or so. <laughs> cute. That's cute. <laughs> That's three weeks in a row you've used the three months joke. You know what? There <laughs> needs to be like streamers that come time. down. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Three months. Um, so yeah, so the fly around, for those of you looking forward to the fly around, that is no longer scheduled for STS-134. That's been pushed off to STS-135. Um, ISRO preps their next launch. For those who have forgotten, ISRO, <laughs> they have the... Uh, uh, Saturn Girl in the chat room is asking if we're going to be going at 135. Um, we are going to do our best. Our plan is yes. Our so plan is yes. So we're 90% go. We are, in fact, putting our 10-year wedding anniversary on hold to get to STS-135. That's right. You're welcome, everyone. Uh, ISRO, who makes the um, PSLV launch vehicles, I as you may remember, they had two launch failures back-to-back -back mm -hmm. on, on these particular rockets. Um, Do you want to go back rockets. to who ISRO is? Uh, they're the um, Indian. It's India, right? Yep. <laughs> I. I'm like, I is... Iceland. Indi Iceland. Iceland. <laughs> 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 Which actually would be kind of cool. Brandon, you know, I'm still tired from Yuri's night. That I was, know, a, that was I a long know. night. That was exhausting. It was awesome, but exhausting. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, India Space Program, they've had a couple of really nasty failures and a scandal in the middle of all that. So, yeah. Failure, failure, scandal. No, Let's baby. hope that this one works because I bet a lot's on the line. So, they're, uh, they're preparing for an April 20th launch of the P Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. Uh, it's going to be carrying Resource Sat 2. And uh, it's looking good. So we'll, we'll try to carry that live because there's a very high chance of big bada boom. And as much as we love these launch vehicles to go up and be successful, as a space geek, it is kind of cool to see them explode. Yeah. Well, hmm, I don't oh, uh, Ryan Space didn't hear about the scandal. Actually, if you'd like more information on the ISRO scandal, basically it came down to um, ISRO officials giving contracts and giving free space away to uh, a company where a previous ISRO leader was now uh, like CEO of, and like just non-competing bids and just really bad stuff. Parabolic Arc, uh, ParaboliceArc.com has a lot of really great information. This is a um, I want to say this is a month old now. I don't Doug remember Messier, how old it is. Doug I don't know where he gets all of his information, but he, he must have little underground... Little moles. Really, who, who find him the most fascinating things. Um, thank you, Uncle BS, actually, in the chat room. Oh, there you uh, go. Posted a link there. Um, no, yeah. Well, no, that's the, oh, well, that's the link. The, that's the current that's article. That's, that's not on the scandal. Uh, but, yeah, no, you can hit up uh, Parabolic Arc and, and probably even just search for it, and it'll, it'll pop up there. Interesting, interesting things going on there. But yeah, the non-compete was was sort of the big one of like, oh wait, no, we're friends. It's cool. No, we're to we totally trust them. We're just gonna give it to them. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. We got this covered. It's a big so scandal. Little scary. Things yeah, you can read all about there. it there. It's um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, let's end this on a happy note. And I just kind of want to show you. Well, it's happy and. Go on. Um, actually, that was adventure. We're doing the adventure. This now. is adventure. This is adventure. So what's this? Happy, happy, joy, joy, joy. And then happy, happy is very close to adventure. Okay. Um, NASA is starting up their Inspires program. Yes. So uh, why don't you talk about Inspires for a moment? Okay. Um, oh, you don't know about Inspires? I'm not as familiar with Inspires as you had hoped I, I was, apparently. All right. So Inspires is a program that NASA is starting where students and their parents will be able to participate in uh, just some pretty cool stuff. So INSPIRE stands for Interdisciplinary No, Nash. no, 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 no. Here's how this worked. They came, they did exactly what we did with EPIC. They came up with INSPIRES and they said, all right, now we want to turn this into an acronym. What, what words can we apply to each letter? And that's how this came about. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell, me what, tell them what it stands for. Interdisciplinary National Science Program Incorporating Research Experience. No, they Students came up with Inspires and tried to figure yeah, out what it, really sure. they came up with Inspires and tried to figure out what it meant after the fact. Uh, well, you know, oh, Chris Radcliffe, a backronym. That's exactly what it is. It Absolutely. is kind of a backronym. You know, some of the best backronyms. All right, are so out blah there. blah blah. Here's the really cool part: <laughs> uh, students are selected for the program. Will have the option to compete for unique, great, appropriate experiences during the summer of 2012 of at NASA facilities. At NASA facilities. And participating universities. Uh, the summer experience provides students with a hands-on opportunity to investigate education and careers in the STEM disciplines. So basically, you get to go to NASA places and do cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, that's cool. 
high school but, students. Just want to be really clear about that. It's high school students. So but I want to show you guys a clip of what I think is really, really cool. It really inspiring and gets people engaged. It has nothing to do with space. You just blow up a rocket. Everybody knows. That too. If NASA and other space geeks can pull this off in a space-related field, do, right? Yes. Right? All right. I'm just going to stop talking about it. Watch this clip. And be amazed. This is not CGI. This is not a, you'll figure no, out how he did it. it's so cool though. It, it was real. They were really interacting with kids exactly as you saw. You'll figure out how they were doing it. In a really moment. quickly. We, we, but but we just, think about being a tiny little child. And oh this no, happening. they had adults screaming at this. Go ahead, go, go play the clip. So that's, you guys can see more of that if you hit the uh, Wikipedia article. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> the running. <laughs> so uh, it's actually not Disney, Eeyore. This is a uh, traveling uh, uh, production in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, like a play, not a play, but that kind of thing. And that was one of the sort of the baby dinosaurs. Now, hang on. The, so the chat room is making, is, is joking around a little bit, and you know, things yeah. like, um, you know, teaching kids, uh, a man in a rocket suit wouldn't be as inspired, or as cool. Right, um, right. What are you teaching the kids, teaching them not to get eaten? And, and this is, I think, where the space community fails. You don't always have to always be teaching them something. You can sometimes just choose to inspire them. Yeah. There is something to be said for just inspiring people. I will say that if you go to that video on YouTube, uh, there's a, a related video, uh, a, a newscast talking about it. It's actually in our wiki as well. Uh, and they talk to the children afterwards. And, you know, you can't necessarily say that, well, that one looked like he was scared and then they talked to him. But they talked to three or four different children, male and female, and they all said they thought it was interesting and that they would like to see it again. Every right. last one of them. And I, I was very impressed by that. And as somebody else in the chat room said that, you know, their daughter would be the one crying and peeing in the corner, I admittedly probably would too at that and age. And me too. Uh, no, even at this age. But I just, it's still so fascinating. It's so different than reading something in a book or, or you know, watching Not that reading's it. bad. <laughs> no, but it's, it's just... How dare they make our children read? No, I just mean in like a textbook. <laughs> when it's something you can sort of see and mm. feel and hear and just all of those different senses you, coming yes. alive at the same time, that's, that makes a memory and that makes an impression and that motivates people. It, it just, it's Which goes back to our point, and we've been talking about this. We, I, I realize we've been harping this home, uh, yeah. just, but uh, you know, it's about inspiring, telling stories, and getting people engaged. And that's why I want. I realized that clip had nothing to do with space, but no. oh my gosh, were they engaged? I was watching that, going, "Oh, I want to be there." And um, there's nothing quite like a rocket launch, right? right? I mean, especially if you watch it in person, it, it can, it really can change you. But we need to find a way to bring that a little bit closer to home. Uh, someone mentioned earlier, and actually, this is in the wiki, and I don't think we pointed it out. There's a one ninth scale, is it? Um, yeah. Saturn. Saturn. I'll see if I can find it. Keep going. Um, I don't think it's a one. I don't. I don't think it's a full Saturn V one nine scale because that would be. Um, anyhow, uh, there there are a couple of uh, model rocket launches. Yeah, one ninth scale Saturn one B. Saturn one B. All right, um, so that makes a lot more sense. I'm like, because that would be very very large. Yeah. Um, one ninth scale Saturn. Although that's still going to be pretty big. Pretty big. Um, uh, rocket launches going on, and that, that's certainly one way to do it. The difference being, of course. Uh, the problem with model rocketry and any rocketry is it, it's so short. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, the last like 30 seconds tops. And then you're like, that was fun. Well, but Tim was saying that uh, for Yoris, uh, that they were shooting off rockets for some of these kids. And some little kids have never seen such a thing before. And so for them, it it is. At least that first time, you're just in complete awe of what a cool thing that is. And it shoots up way higher than you can imagine seeing because you're so tiny at the time. And, and, you know, that's still really cool, too. And just need to shoot off a rocket. Uh, Jet for me brings up something, and I, I've thought about this for a long time, trying to figure out how to make it happen. And it won't happen by STS-135, but right. it would be fun, which is, uh, he said, I w always thought NASA should make uh, each launch a two-day concert event providing a stadium for 10,000 people with a view of the stage and a view of the pad. Mm -hmm. And I thought uh, much the same thing, kind of in Titusville, there's this, there's this area when you're, when you're driving down, um, it's got this great shot of where the pad is mm -hmm. and kind of the VAB over there. Um, and then, there, but there's a spot for a lot of people and a stage. So you can kind of have a stage and screen off to one side and then just turn to your right a little bit and you've got the launch right there. It's 10 miles away. I would love to just have like a full day or two concert with, you know, Art, huge brand name artists, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what other word to use, and just bring in a bunch of people mm -hmm. and just be make it a giant party. Mm -hmm. uh, just every launch is a giant party and experience the launch, not just It is kind of sad that uh, we only do like a Yuri's Night once a year. You know, every, yeah, and every Jeffrey launch thinking, should be sort Yes, of like and Jeffrey Yuri's. means thinking the, the press site at the three mile marker, absolutely, that's the place to do it. Now, I, I'm trying to figure out a site where Space Vidcast could do it, because there's just no way NASA's going to allow the three mile marker. But absolutely, at the press site, that is a perfect Did, location, and you could wrap Al around. Weird Daft Punk, absolutely, I'm all over it. For those who've been to the press site, <laughs> you could actually wrap the entire site kind of around that road, and you could get way more than 10,000 people over there. You could get a ton of mm -hmm. people over there watching that launch at the three mile marker, where you can feel that, you can actually Actually feel the sound yeah. pressing against your chest as the vehicle is launching. That's the force of the launch from three miles away. That's how much force is there. That, that's what I would love to see the space industry do. We're not going to get that from uh, NASA. Right. It's just ingrained in the culture. It's not going to happen. Like the X Prize Cup, exactly. X Prize Cup, yes. Um, I challenge SpaceX to do something like that. We love your rockets. We love the Falcon 9. We're excited for that Falcon Heavy. Yep. First and foremost, it's about the rocket. Yep. But you know what? It is about inspiring people as well. I realize Slick 40 is on a military base, so you right. can't, you're not going to be able to bring people in there. But if any company in the new space or aerospace industry has the ability to really do the stuff with big, bad rockets, the stuff that you can feel, it's SpaceX. So that's my... Not that anyone from SpaceX... Well, actually, we do have a couple people from SpaceX watching, but... I would love to see that, and I think there are a ton of people who would love to see that, and, and how great would that really, be? Really, SpaceX's goal should be giving Virgin a run for their money. <laughs> well, they're, but they're completely different. They are completely different, but Virgin throws some nice parties. Yeah, they do. All right, on that note, um, that's our show for this week. Uh, join us next week when we're going to talk about more awesome space stuff. And uh, I think we've got even more Yuri's announcements next week. Yeah, because uh, all of the the... Contest closed tonight. Is that our last show? Next week, I believe, is our... Oh, yeah, yeah. Next week is our last show before, before the, the launch. launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour, the final launch of OV-105, the last shuttle ever built. And then there was one launch after that, STS-134, which is the last launch of the program ever. So thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned if you're watching live. Space Vidcast After Dark is up next. We'll see you next week.